Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. And with me is Sam West. Today, we're going to be talking about the spell Locate Animals or Plants. Initial thoughts? If this spell were not a ritual, it would be uncastable. It's a ritual, though. So that means it's very castable. Uh, this is a horrible spell of your arranger most of the time. Um, and a pretty fine spell to prepare as a druid and a mediocre spell as a bard. I don't think, I don't know if bards are ritual casters. I have to double check that. But this is, the uses of it are narrow again. This is the kind of thing that you're not going to find yourself casting all that frequently. Um, it can be handy in weird situations, especially once you get meeting more diverse characters because you can use it as a tool to find them in some weird ways yeah that's that's the biggest uh use i could think of was, you know like say you're looking for a a pirate captain who had a monkey on his shoulder or something and then you know there's not many monkeys around within five miles so if you can find that yeah. you can find him that's uh yeah or like you'll find that the monkeys that are around in like a caribbean environment are those native to some weird islands and the one out in the middle of the sea that's probably who you're looking for right yeah <laughs> um that's kind of the use case of it it also so this also can be a kind i i kind of wish spells like this didn't exist in a lot of ways because it makes things like survival and the survival element of the game feel moot it's just like okay we know we need to find this specific ingredient i locate it well, there goes any adventure that was going to be built around finding it. There goes any adventure that we go around discovering that, oh, something already grabbed this ancient tree that we're looking for or whatever and chopped it down and moved it somewhere and we have to go find those creatures. You just like, I locate it, that's where it is, let's go get it. Well, um, you still need to, you got the adventure of getting there through the, the forest sure. of peril. Yes, absolutely. And I will say that a lot of people, the gameplay that is the survival checks, the nature checks, the looking through the foliage to find clues and tracks and stuff that's definitely not for everybody um it's not for me i know but there are some people that do really like the old school tracking the different kinds of every little nuanced berry that they find along the route they have giant lists of oh well this is the climate we're in and these are the kinds of things that would grow within this climate these are the kinds of things that would need to go in this specific spell effect and potion you have to go and find each and every single one of them again not for me but it is for some people and this spell kind of defeats any kind of gameplay that would have um that just means like if you don't if you want to have that gaming experience i'd recommend probably just saying yeah let's not use locate animals and plants um but if you aren't and you still need to be like all right we need to find a spring of mistletoe so we can make some food and water you can just wear some of the mistletoe at like give me bring me to the mistletoe right and that's it does that well uh i'm sure there are, are instances as well where you could um you could leave traces of a, a plant that you know somebody else is going to be looking for and uh, just to throw them off, you know, if they if they need a whole bunch of it, and you just leave like one unit of it somewhere, mm -hmm. and uh, while you go and grab the big big haul for yourself, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm kind of grasping the straws here. Well, so there are. I think planting is actually, and when I say planting, I don't mean like into the ground, but I mean putting right. things on people is a way to turn this into locate person. Um, in that you can oh, like if yeah, you can slip that. a sprig of mistletoe on somebody, you can detect everyone that's got mistletoe on them within five miles. If you can find even more niche plants than that, you can do it in that way. If you're familiar as like a hamster and you know that their hamsters aren't local to this environment, you can stick your hamster in somebody's backpack. They leave with said hamster and you just locate it ritually because you can just spend it every 10 minutes to cast mm -hmm. it, sit on the back of the cart um, and just follow them for as long as you need to from a safe three miles away if you need, right? um that can be a way to use the spell in a kind of interesting way and again because it's a ritual spell it's just a thing you could do ritual spells i would recommend people think about not as spells but as features so i did check bards are ritual casters as are druids you can just take the spell with the intention of it being an extra feature that you prepared right you don't have to spend resources on it so it's just you can spend 10 minutes you can just think of it only as ever spending 10 minutes and six seconds to get the effect and in those instances, it's just a bonus thing you can do that isn't competing with your spell slots if you know what you want your spell slots to be doing anyway. Um, so if you're in the situation where you are comfortable and saying, I have enough second level slots, I have enough, or next seven level, second level spells, I have enough third level spells, I don't necessarily need to prepare anything else nifty or uh, anything else that good is going to compete with that resource, you can just prepare rituals and they will always work for that. Um, it's a little bit worse for bards, they have to learn their spells. So you have to like sit down and be like, I guess I can't ever do something else i'm just always going to locate animals or plants but again you can have some niche uses as far as tracking people as far as finding things of specific types that you're looking for um it does kind of do that 
Again, as a ranger, having spent a spell on this, oh, I uh, don't love that. It makes the long distance uses of it a lot worse because you're limited by your spell slots then. You can't track somebody for a three days trip because you have to use a second level spell slot on it. Um, so, I mean, like with long rests, as long as you don't, you generally know where they're going, you might not lose them, but it is substantially worse there. Um, but again, it this is a pretty harmless spell as a ritual that isn't going to really hurt you to uh, to prepare all that much. I didn't even think about using it as a tracking device. That uh, that bumps it up a star for me. Nice. Um, yeah, it's it's fine. There are also going to be kinds of situations where there are beasts that you're going to want to locate, especially beasts that aren't like the mundane beasts we have in the real world, but are mm-hmm. like dinosaurs, for example. Um, if, if you are in the nat- or in the if you have a weird plan that involves a triceratops, and you know there are <laughs> triceratops native to this environment, locating one is useful. Um, and there can be situations where some wacky hijinks can come up to you where you are like, all right, we need a big something big to break through this wall. Let's get a Triceratops angry at the wall and have it charge through it, right? You can lead to some pretty memorable moments by using it as a tool to find other tools. Um, that's super spell niche, components. Though. Yeah, spell components is kind of the big one, but most people don't really acknowledge them anyway. Most people just like, yeah. okay, I buy my spell components at the local shop and they go in my backpack and I forget they exist. I like tracking my spell components personally, so I do like the idea of going out and being like, all right, I need mistletoe for create food and water. Let's find some mistletoe. I like the idea of, you know, finding bats to get their guano for fireballs. That's neat to me. Um, it's wildly impractical and a giant waste of time at most tables, though. So, um, yeah, yeah, not great. Yeah, having to hold the bat and wait for it to... You just scoop it on the floor. Yeah. Easy peasy. Gross. Yeah. Um, this also, there's a neat thing you can do with this as a DM. Um, if your players are getting very friendly with the conjuration magic, if you're playing a druid that's using summon beasts consistently, if you're using uh, rangers that are uh, animal companions, if you're playing against people who's familiars, I mean, familiars become fey. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Quick caveat. Uh, I said earlier that you summon a familiar that is a hamster. That can't be right because they're, I believe their type is fey and not beast. Yeah, you have yeah, to get yeah. a real hamster that you stick on them. <laughs> so you just have to find a hamster or some animal that you know you can tame enough that it'll sit in their pack for however long you need it to. That can then work. You're more likely going to be doing that with plants because they're a little bit easier to just stick there and expect that they're going to stay there forever. Um, this is definitely, uh, yeah, not familiars. But if you're, if you're DMing again, like I said, and you know your player's going to have animals on them, if they have a pet mastiff, if they have, uh, if they're trying to get a lot of extra resources and actions in pets, this can be a way that it opens up tracking to them that otherwise wouldn't be available. This opens up a villainous way to locate the party as long as they're within, as long as that villain is within five miles of them. Yeah. And I think that actually leads to some interesting conflict. If you're playing again, if you're fighting against a ranger, there's a real reason when you go out to face them in their native environment, right? If you're playing against some gloom stalker, that edge lord that's out to kill all humanity because they're horrible to beasts and you know it's PETA to the extreme kind of deal, that's when you can say, "All right, boy, I'm sorry, I have to leave you at home today because we're going into the woods and I can't have the ranger find us for free." Um, it's a real kind of ca- trade off you have there that adds some amount of counterbalance um, to pet compositions, to heavy everyone's got three different things they're summoning and running around with kinds of strategies. Yeah. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, I don't know. I don't have much more to say about this one. It's not a lot exciting. Else? Yeah, this is, it, there's not a lot to say. It does what it says it does. There are some neat ways to use it in alternative ways, but they're few and far between. They're really un, unreliable. If, if that sprig of mistletoe bounces out of the backpack halfway through the trip, well, that plan goes out the window. So it, yeah, there's not a lot to talk about here. All right. Well, Sam score. Oh, I'm sorry. You cut out. That's it. Oh, can you hear me? No, I can't. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sam score. This is a, and because it's a ritual, I'll give this a three out of five. It's just such a low cost to take that if you're a ranger or if you're a druid, this is a pretty harmless spell to have on you, especially at the upper tiers. If you're a ranger, this is a one out of five. You really can't take this. This just doesn't do anything most of the time. Um, you have to learn it. Like same with bards, you have to learn it. It's a lot worse on those two classes. Um, but again, if you're a druid, if you want, if you're not using your second level slot or if you're not using preparing second level options and you don't need more of them, this is free. There's no reason not to take it. Yeah, I was going to go with two, but um, I- 
it, like I said, I like the tracking element of it. So uh, oh, I'll bump good. that up to three. So agreed. Nice. All right. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. And uh, that was, uh, what was that? Locate animals or plants. Yep. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, our full review of the spell, and other fun things.